Hello, my friends. It's Ranger Russ at the Meg's Point Nature Center. Really excited to, today because I'm doing something a little bit different. It's going to be fun. Hopefully, you guys think it's fun. I'm having fun just setting it up. Uh, but what I'm going to do today is a behind-the-scenes tour. So I'm going old school to start out. This is just my cell phone, no microphone, and I'll show you the equipment as I go, and I'll add it to the, to the program as I go. Okay, so I've had a few questions. People want to know uh, what equipment we use, how this gets set up, all that kind of thing. So right now, I'm doing this program handheld on my phone. When I started, the very first time we did this program, which I just figured out, it's almost six months ago that we started these live programs. So we'll have to do a special program for the six-month anniversary. Maybe we'll replay uh, your favorite program. Maybe you guys could all put in what your favorite program is, and we can replay it live, uh, or I can watch it with you or something like that. That would be fun. But we're going to be talking about how this program is put on for you. Tuesday through Friday at 11 o'clock, and I know these are like... Uh, commercials that I constantly do, but I really encourage people to follow us on Facebook, like our Facebook, follow us on Facebook. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Meg's Point Nature Center YouTube channel. As soon as I get a thousand, going for a thousand, we don't even have 200 yet, so I need everybody, reach out to everybody you know and encourage them to uh, sign up for YouTube. Um, also, I'm going to uh, remind you that you can see this material on our website, megspointnaturecenter.org. Visit the Virtual Learning Center, and those video, these videos are all stored there. So if you're watching live, you can go back and watch it again and again and again and again, as many times as you want to. Uh, let's remind everybody that the park is open, and it is a beautiful day today. Perfect temperature. Uh, I'm out there in short sleeves. You don't need a jacket. There's no strong winds like yesterday. I don't know if you saw the program yesterday, but it was really windy out here. It's just a beautiful day here at Hammond Asset. Maybe I should have reversed yesterday's program with today's program, uh, but then you wouldn't have had as much fun getting me watching me get blown around out on the beach. All right, so the first thing uh, we're going to do is I'm going to turn the camera around. Oh, and everybody's doing it, I see, but please continue to put up where you're messaging from. If you have any questions or comments, we can do them at any time. Now, the first thing I got, uh, aside from a tripod, so I started out with just this tripod here. Uh, the phone was mounted on the tripod. And then, very quickly, we realized that we needed some better... Uh, sound. So we started using a microphone just like this one. That's the mic that clips onto my uh, collar. And then I've got this just plugs into the, uh, into the phone. And I'm going to hook it up right now so you guys are going to get to see how quickly it changes. Let's get that clipped on there. We'll plug this into the phone. So oh, now we should have some better sound there, right? So this is what we did. I, then I got, a, uh, I got a wireless mic so that I could move away from the camera, uh, which doesn't work as well as the plug-in. I found that I really only use that wireless mic if I need the camera to stay still and I'm going to be moving around a lot and I need to get farther away from the camera. Uh, another thing that we got very quickly, thanks to one of the viewers, uh, with the shaky hands, when I'm holding the camera, this is a gimbal. It balances. So what I do, I put the phone in. Let's see, it goes this way. And I put the phone in and I balance it this way. And then I turn it this way and I balance it this way. And then I power it on and it automatically lines up. It's not gonna do it because there's no phone in it. It'll just do a lot of vibrations. Uh, but that way, with this toggle, I can use the direction 
And it's sort of reverse of what I think it should be. So sometimes you'll see me, I go uh, the wrong direction. Um, but it allows me to turn and it keeps it stable while I'm walking around. One of the things that I do also while I'm walking around is I still walk around with the tripod. I did this, the program yesterday. I walked around with the tripod so that if I needed to, I could just set it down and then I could pick something up and talk about it. So this really adds a lot to how stable the program is. Uh, I, again, the tripod does wonders because I can just set it down. Uh, if I'm doing a woods program, I never know what I'm going to find. And that's the one thing that I'm going to say, the most important thing, not the one thing, but the most important thing I'm going to say doing these programs is you have to be prepared for everything. And that leads me to uh, the next thing. Well, actually, first, let's talk lighting. Initially, the first programs I did just was the lighting in this room. And if you look at them, you're going to see there's shadows and it's really hard to see. Next, I got some work lights. We just have some uh, big spotlights that we use when you're, you're doing work. I use them for outside programs so that people can see the path as they get back to their cars. But then I found these lights, found these online, and I'm gonna turn this on. Let's see here, so it actually has a great option. Right now it's plugged into the wall, but it can also, I've got two batteries, so I can take this out into the woods. When I did the uh, nighttime insect program, I had the batteries in, I, then I could go anywhere and just turn the light on. Now the thing that I love about this light, I don't like to look really blue on camera. So with the spotlights, there's the spotlight, it is very blue. That's the way the spotlights were, uh, the drop lights that I initially started out with. This has, let's turn the blue off, this has a, oh, sorry, a so I also don't want to look really yellow. So I usually do, let's turn that down. And then we turn the, the white up a little bit. I usually do a little bit of a combination with more yellow than white. And that lights up wherever I am. It takes the shadows away, makes it easier for you to see the star of the show, which is not me. Let's look at some of the stars of the show, because I've done sh shows on all of these. It's the animals, or the, whatever the subject matter is. They're the real stars of the show. Uh, so let's just take a look again at... That is our lighting setup. And again, there's an extension cord that goes all the way over to the plug. Okay. Now, another thing that I had to add... When I'm out in the field, having everything at hand. So when I'm doing the program in here, sometimes I'm sitting in a chair. I'm kind of fidgety, so sitting in the chair sometimes helps keep me from moving around a lot, which is why generally I don't suggest people sit down to do a presentation, but that keeps me from fidgeting. But when I'm in the chair, I need to have everything right at hand. So this was a program uh, today I did a Zoom program for uh, Madison Rotary Club, and this was standing by in case they had a question about uh, something I could show them a picture if I didn't have an actual snake. So, back to if I'm in the field, this I, goes around my waist, hangs on my hip, and this has everything in it. The tripod goes in here, uh, but when I'm obviously doing a program, it's not there. The microphone is here. There are, there is right here, a battery backup. So I've been out uh, when I did, um, which program was it? I think it was uh, Macutus State Park. My battery started going on the phone. That was a long program. So actually, while I was filming, I was walking along and I pulled out my cable and plugged in the backup battery and then plugged it into my phone and carried the battery 
uh, with the, it was under the tripod there. Uh, so I did that the whole time while I was walking. Uh, this is for the, um, this charges the wire, this one charges the wireless mic. And then this is for the battery uh, and the phone. And then the wireless mic uh, usually goes in here. It's not in here today because it's actually in my office on the charger. Uh, but for the wireless mic, I had to add some, uh, this little Velcro patch here, I added so that I could stick the microphone here and then it plugs in to the phone. The other part goes on my belt and up to uh, where I usually have the microphone. Another thing, I always keep a bottle of water around with me. Um, I shouldn't say always. There have been programs I did out in the field and I didn't have my uh, belt that has the carry case for this, which is really important when you're doing public programs. I usually carry this as well. You don't want to get a dry throat or a frog in your throat while you're out doing a program uh, for a school kids and end up coughing, which has happened to me. Uh, one of the things too, a lot of times on this chair, so if you notice the tripod is here and this is where the program happens. I don't put, I did this once, I put the tripod on the table with the uh, program I was doing and every time I moved, it was a turtle, every time I moved the turtle, the camera shook. So I, now I always keep the tripod separate from where I'm doing the program. And then up here, there were usually, uh, this is where I keep the notes, um, like wear your masks and some parks are closed. Uh, those would be up here. And then I usually have a little information. So at the Nature Center, we created these field guides for my staff and volunteers and myself to answer any questions that people might have. So if I've got one of these already for my program, so this was the snapping turtle program I did, I'll just print this out uh, or pull it out of the book that we use, uh, that the volunteers use. And that way, um, if you guys ask me a question I don't know the answer to, I can just take a quick look at that. Um, usually though, me following, uh, uh, note cards doesn't really work when doing a program. I do, uh, it, I lose track of where I am. It really doesn't flow if I'm reading note cards. So I've got to just tell you guys what I know and then I can stop and pause and take a look at, at the, at the notes. Here's something else that I needed to do. Uh, pretty early on, people would walk in while I was doing a program and just start talking to me which is kind of funny, but it doesn't really go for a very good program. So now, and I didn't do this this time because uh, I'm doing a behind the scenes, but we put these on the door. So Facebook Live in progress. I can't believe how, like when I first decided or thought that I should do this, it's like I don't know why I didn't think of this sooner because it really gives my volunteers and staff a heads up. There's two of them if, in case there's two doors uh, and then I started doing this. I have this one on a string and I wear this around uh, on my back <laughs> because people walk up to me uh, when I did the um, Greenway Trail program. I had somebody that stopped and wanted to talk to me and didn't realize that I was live the whole time. So it was pretty funny. Uh, I'm trying to talk to you all and do a, a flowing program and there's somebody waiting to have a conversation with me. And I was trying to do hand signals and tell them I was live, um, especially if the camera is facing me. And I, I don't always have the camera. I try not to have the camera on me. It should really be on what we're talking about. Um, but these are just signs we made here at the Nature Center. Uh, they work. <laughs> they really work. It's really important to have that. It, it gives people a heads up as to what's going on. Now, I see Judith, who still counts as one of our volunteers, even though she lives in Ohio now. She's got a great question about um, equipment, whether we have it on our wish list. If you go to our website, we do have a wish list of 
things that we're looking for. Uh, but currently, I don't have any of the Facebook Live equipment on there because thanks to the friends of Ham and Asset, uh, they provide me with a, uh, a credit card and some funds and I've been able to purchase this equipment. So uh, the gimbal came uh, through a donation to the friends specifically to buy one. Uh, the tripod, the, the carrying bag, the lighting fixtures, all of that uh, came through the Friends of Hammond Asset. So if you make a, a donation to the Friends of Hammond Asset, a lot of times that goes um, to, to go towards equipment for me. And for the animal care, I'm going to remind everyone that the Friends are paying for animal care right now. So any of the food and caring for the animals... Because it's not just food. When I say animal care, there's a lot of food that goes into it. And we'll, we'll probably do a behind-the-scenes caring for animals program coming up as well. Um, but it's really important to know that it's not just animal food. There's bedding um, and other things that go along with it. Oh. All right. should have put the phone in first. I'm going to put the phone in and show you guys uh, how it looks. Let's see. We've got some questions though. Terrific salesman, not just for nature. Uh, the real inside story. Very interesting. I'm glad you guys are interested in this. I didn't know how this program would go. And I actually, I thought about doing it a few weeks ago. And I didn't do it because I wasn't sure. All right, so we've got the tripod in. Well, I want to note it. There we go. I also carry a mask in my pocket. It's really tough to do the program with the mask on, but I always have it in my pocket in case I get too many people are in the area. Usually people, as soon as they realize I'm live, they give me a wide berth so that I don't have to put this mask on. So remember, you got to keep your six feet of distance. Okay, I'm gonna turn this on. It's gonna spin for a second. It's not liking what I just did there. There we go. So now you're on the gimbal. You're gonna see it's much more balanced now uh, than me just uh, carrying the phone around. And we can step back and look at a setup. So if you were behind the scenes, again, the tripod would be there. I typically would be sitting in the chair. Again, that's just for the programs uh, that I, I don't want to be bouncing around. And you probably noticed that I'm, I'm moving around quite a bit. Uh, these programs for me are, they are a lot of fun. I say that all the time, but I do get excited before a program. It's the same thing that happens when I'm going into a school or having a group come through the nature center. The, the subject matter is exciting to me. It's super interesting. I feel like I have never lost my sense of wonder about the natural world. And I love to see other people get excited and ask questions and have a sense of wonder as well. So I get super excited for a program and I really have to concentrate on slowing down because I do talk too quickly sometimes. And sitting down sort of helps me uh, not be as fidgety as if I'm standing up. But I do prefer to do the program standing up. Okay, we've got Nancy says, um, the husbandry with the animals is so interesting and involved. It's always interesting to me. Good to know. So we will do a behind the scenes on animal care at some point. Actually, we may have to do a couple of programs uh, because we have different types of animals and each group of animals has their own, um, their own unique challenges that come along with it. Okay, uh, another thing that I do when I'm doing these programs, uh, there's usually a towel hanging there uh, or nearby me when I'm doing a program. A lot of the fish programs, the turtle programs, I'll get my hands wet and then when I go to stop and check 
the questions, I'm not able to see the questions or, or move the control of the camera without getting too wet. So I keep a, a towel nearby. Actually, when I did, um, which program? I think it was Mono Pond. I had a small towel with me. It's a, it was a warm day and I was actually toweling myself off as I went because uh, it was getting pretty hot out there. I'm gonna flip the camera back around because part of, okay, so part of my equipment for the program is the vest and I've got the, the deep logo on there. So we wanna let people know, this one actually is just park staff, but I really want people to recognize that I work for the state of Connecticut. I am a, a Department of Energy and Environmental Protection employee. And as such, I want to make sure that I advertise that while I'm doing the programs. Sometimes people don't realize that the Megs Point Nature Center is uh, a deep facility. And I always want people to know where the program is coming to you from. So it is the state of Connecticut. Uh, one of the things that I have done in the building, so I've worked in this building, well, this building since it opened, but at Meg's Point since uh, 2000, 2000, 2001, I started. Uh, and then at Rocky Neck before that. But I always would love it. I really want these programs to be free. I want them to be everybody, everywhere. I want everybody to have an opportunity to see them. Uh, so I, I think that the state of Connecticut, this is something that the state is giving to the people of Connecticut and the building is as well. All right, let's see if we have, we have a few more comments. Love your programs, uh, somewhat of a nature geek as well. If you ever need a sign language interpreter for your programs, please let me know. All right, that is something that I have thought about a lot, how we can incorporate sign language into the programs. The school that I went to, Northwestern Connecticut Community College, that's where I got my first, uh, my associate's degree, uh, it has a very high population of hearing impaired uh, and there's a lot of sign language that goes on. Now, I haven't used sign language in a long time. I knew a little bit uh, way back when, but sign language, again, I think that these programs should be open and accessible to everyone. So if you visit our website, we've got a translator on there. Um, there's a special function on there for visually impaired to, to make the, the words larger, uh, but we don't have any uh, sign language and it would be really great to somehow uh, put a uh, sign language um, in the program somehow. I'm gonna have to figure that one out. All right, that's Betty. We're gonna get back to you on that one. This is, this is great. Uh, what else do we miss? Wanted to be in the a forest ranger. Discouraged when I was in high school. What a shame. That is a shame. Uh, I was not discouraged. Uh, there were people that I think frowned upon me becoming a ranger. Um, but I felt supported in, in most quarters. Most of my teachers, my parents, uh, I think everybody knew that this was in me from the beginning. I'd say, you know, my mom always says that the first, when people asked who I wanted to be, I always said, I, I guess the first thing I said, which I don't remember this, she said I used to tell people I wanted to work for Smokey Bear. But I do remember saying the first thing I remember saying for my job was to be a forest ranger. And uh, that was pretty cool. Ah, Betty got her degree from uh, Northwestern Connecticut community as well. Very cool. All right. I think that I've covered everything that I wanted to talk about as far as behind the scenes. If anyone has any questions, this is a great time for you to ask me questions about behind the scenes um, programs. 
outside programs are really challenging and the microphone was that was the best thing that happened as far as outside programs the wind just takes it away it just changes uh, how I'm able to do a program when I'm outside I have to get really close to the camera um, when the camera's flipped around it's okay because I can get right up to where the microphone is on the phone but this it just makes it so much better I can move away from the camera um, I can move around I usually try and hide the microphone uh, the wire too so I'll zip it into my vest with the wireless one it's a lot easier to hide it because it can go around and clip onto your belt uh, but this one I always try and stick it down there like that Smokey Bear President. Yeah, I didn't know that there was a club until uh, I was much older. All right, any other questions? Let's see if I missed any. I think that I covered, covered everything there. Oh. Here, my mom's got one. Oh, I was talking about VOAG. Yes, the, so I have been the spokesman for Smokey Bear for deep for a very long time. So as you know, Smokey doesn't talk and he needs people to talk for him. So starting in high school uh, was the first time we used to do uh, programs where we would bring Smokey and all the kids from the lower leveled schools from high school, so the elementary school and the middle school would come to the high school and we would give them a tour of the woods behind the school and the barn and Smokey would be there and I got to be Smokey's spokesman. Okay. Oh, so... You were discouraged because you were a woman. I'll have to say now, I think there are more women doing this job than men, at least the education part. Um, so it's very unfortunate that anybody be discouraged uh, from what they want to do. It looks like my camera is not focusing. Maybe that's, there we go. Maybe that's just me. Um, but that's too bad. Everybody should really have a chance uh, to do this. I'm not sure where you are, Nancy. Uh, but if you are near the nature center, when we reopen, it would be great if, uh, if you wanted to volunteer, um, you could come in and, and, uh, become a forest ranger now. Uh, not that the, the volunteers are consider themselves rangers. Most of them don't want to touch that word. Uh, I call them all rangers, like my staff, they're rangers, but it, it's a little bit different. They, they don't think that they can do it. I think. All right. Do we have any other questions? Any other behind the scenes things I can share with you? Time to remind everybody. So I, I'll, I'm always going to be pushing these programs going forward. The Facebook Live programs happen Tuesday through Friday at 11 o'clock. Unfortunately, right now, the Nature Center is closed. You can still visit Hammonasset and any of the other state parks. I do know that some of the state parks are closing on weekends, they get just too many people. Still, even with school starting and a lot of people are back in the workplace, we're still getting a lot of visitation to our state park system. So you all can help. Nobody in the state of Connecticut, no resident of the state of Connecticut is more than 15 minutes from a state park. But if your state park is full or closed, please don't try and park on the street and walk in go find another park to visit. They're not far away and they're all fantastic. You've seen many of the programs that I've done at state parks. Every one of those parks, I have found a reason to go back again. And I have now my list of things that I wanna do in state parks is growing. I thought as I visited parks, I could say, oh, I could check off, never been to that park, I can check it off. Wadsworth Falls, I, I've never visited the big falls. I visited that as part of the program last time and now I just want to go back and sit below the falls because I didn't get to just sit and enjoy the falls 
Uh, it really was an amazing park. So continue to go out and take advantage of the state parks. They're your backyard. If you don't have a swimming pool or a swimming hole, you've got one in a state park. If you don't have a trail you can hike, you've got one in a state park. So they belong to the people of the state of Connecticut. Please take advantage of that, but treat it with respect. Carry out what you carry in. Not all of our parks have trash facilities, so you're gonna have to bring it with you when you leave, but please do that. I really, it's really discouraging when you get to this beautiful spot like a waterfall or a river or a beach or just a forest trail and you start to find trash along the trail. Nobody wants to see that. The park staff are always trying to keep that clean, but some of the out of the way trails don't get visited uh, maybe once a month or so. So the trash might build up. All right, thank you and don't forget to mention. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Judith. We are doing a very, very special program this Saturday at 10 o'clock. We're going to have an eagle, a real live eagle on camera. An eagle that big, okay? And we're going to be talking about uh, the eagle. You're going to learn all about that, but we're also going to learn of the, sig the significance of eagles to the Native American community. Um, so... Those programs, they're the first four Saturdays in October at 10 o'clock. Going to be lots of fun. I can't wait. The following one is at Atlatl. So I did a small, very small at Atlatl program. I'm going to have Gary Nulf, who, as far as I'm concerned, is the world-renowned expert on at Atlatl. I don't know of anybody that knows more about at Atlatls than Gary. So it's going to be a great opportunity We'll have a target set up and we'll show you how they're thrown. We'll do some real distance throws. I didn't really do that during the presentation. Um, but we will do all of that for you. And my mom had a great suggestion about Atlatl, which I didn't do during the program, but we will do it uh, for this coming Atlatl program. So that's the second Saturday for the Atlatl. This Saturday, it's the Eagle. And I'm really looking forward to that. All right, so until tomorrow, this is Ranger Russ coming to you from the Megs Point Nature Center, and I will see you all tomorrow.